Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner, or if you're new, then welcome aboard. Today we'll be looking at Windows Server 2008 R2, and what we're going to be talking about is, as I'm sure the title already told you, is creating multiple websites on one Windows Server. Now there's a couple reasons we'd want to do this. First, is if you're hosting, maybe you're hosting websites for someone, and you have to have multiple websites served up on one Windows server. Now when you're doing this, you have to pay attention to your IP addressing, and I'll get to that in just a minute. Next, you may want to do this because maybe you're hosting internal websites as we do on our network. We have a lot of internal applications today running on IIS as a back end, you know, for databases and such. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to create a new website in our sites here in our server manager. So let's back up a little bit. Let's say we don't even know where server manager is. Let's go ahead and get out of the server manager. And we're going to start first of all by adding another IP address. Because when you have multiple websites on one server, you have to have a separate IP address for each in particular, in, uh, particular website, or you're going to have to start separating them by ports. And I find that to be just a little bit sloppy. So first of all, if we go to your start button, we go to networks, and we go into our properties. We have to get into our network adapters. So let's go to network adapter. I'll right click on there. And I'll go to properties. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into Internet Protocol version 4, TCP IPv4. I'm going to double click that. We see our base address, and if I can find a pen here on my desk, we see our base address is 1.10. Okay, 192.168.1.10. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add another IP address because a lot of people don't understand or don't even know that you can bind multiple IP addresses to one network card, and it works very well. There's no problem at all with it. You can put uh, different network cards in your computer, but you don't have to. Windows is smart enough to be able to route uh, those requests into each address through the same NIC, and it's no big deal. So let's go ahead, and we're going to add 1.9 uh, to our address scheme. I'll just add one. So I'm going to add 192.168.1.9, because then we'll have two different addresses. So if we go into Advanced, and right here is where we get to Add IP Addresses. You can see where it says IP Addresses and Add. Let's add another one. And as I said, we'll add 192.168.1. And I'm going to tab over here to 9. Our subnet mask will be the same uh, for a Class C network, 255.255.255.0. Let's click on Add. Now you see we have two different addresses binded to the same NIC. The default gateway is going to be the same for both, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's click OK. Now we'll click OK again, and OK, and get ourselves out of there. Let's close this out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our server manager, wherever yours may be. I always keep mine down here on the taskbar, uh, just to make it easier to assess or access for me, because I do so much of this stuff. Now we're going to go under Roles, and we're going to go into our web server, IIS. Let's go into there. And we'll let this uh, bind back up here. Okay, so once you click on Info Internet Information Services, you're going to come to this pane here. I'm going to try to separate this out just a little bit. There we go. And if we click the little pull-down menu, you're going to get this different thing with all these different, uh, very confusing different things in here that we can work with one at a time, but we're not going to touch that right now. We're going to go under Sites, and we're going to go to Default Website. And under Default Website, you have each one of these. Okay, this is our default site on this actual server. So that's where your you know, first website would be built and everything would be set up ready to go. What we're going to do is click on Sites here at the top. And now you'll see, I'm going to try to pull this over a little bit so we can see. You'll see the default website is ID number 1. And it's binding to port 80 and port 443 for HTTPS. What we got to do first of all is we're going to right click on this and we're simply going to go down to binding. 
And what I want to see here is where it's binding to. And it says IP address, and that's any. That's what that in indicates, right? That's a wildcard for any. Let's click on edit. Instead of all, all unassigned, we don't want that because we want to assign our IP addresses. So we don't want all unassigned. Let's click the pull down menu. And we're going to assign the first web address to 1.10. And we'll simply click OK. And we'll do the same thing with this one because it's the HTTPS for that actual website. Click on Edit. Click this pull down menu and click that to 10. There. Now they're both bound to the 192.168.1.10. Let's click Close. Now we can see up here where the binding changed to 192.168.1.10 port 80. And then this one is the port 443 for our secure port. What you're going to do now is go in here. You can either click Add a Website over here, or we can right-click in here and click Add a Website. Let's say Site Name. We're going to host this for someone. Okay? It could be for anybody. Let's put on there, uh, uh, let's say we're hosting this for Dog Food Company. Again, it could be whoever. Now we need a physical path where the files are going to be served up. So where your HTML files are, um, you know, your default HTML and everything else for your pages. Let's click on this. And we'll click this pull down menu. And usually everything is under INET Pub. WW root is where the original one is, but I don't like to do that. I like to keep my separated for security reasons. If somebody hacks into one of your websites, I don't want them in my root uh, web address. So my WW root is pretty much separated from all the other addresses. So we'll go under INET Pub and we're going to create a new folder pull this down a little bit and the new folder name I make it the same as what the website is enter all right there we go so it's going to be under CINET pub but not under WW root it'll be under dog food now connect as we can do this and you can put in credentials or we can just have application user pass through authentication that's fine don't worry about that now HTTP, the binding here, and then there's HTTPS. First HTTP, port 80, we're going to bind this now to 192.168.1.9. And we'll simply click OK. And now you can see that we have port 80 binded again. So port 80 is used multiple times because it's coming in to a separate IP address go back in here to binding now you'll see this is our binding HTTP port 80 is going to that address and that is for our dog food company or whoever it may be maybe it's an internal uh, intranet website or whatever you're using this for let's click on add and now we're going to do HTTPS just in case we have any secure web pages on here and we'll bind that to port 90 also and we'll just say this is our uh, servers.1 for our SSL certificate. That's where the certificate will be. And click OK. All right, then we'll click Close. Now what's going to happen is anything that comes in there to that 192.168.1.9 address will be routed into that dog food folder. So you'll have all of their files in there, whatever they may have for their website, or maybe you're designing it. Everything you design, you would put into that folder, and that's going to keep it separate from your web address. Now, I know what you may be asking, and before you even email that question, I can tell you that, very simply put, you can have pretty much as many as you want in here. We've never came against a problem where we had too many uh, websites for our one server to host. Unless you get really, really bogged down and really hit, and uh, it takes down your memory or something like that. So be very careful on that side. Make sure your server is beefy enough to run everything and you'll be in good shape. So folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on creating multiple or hosting multiple websites on one server. And if you'd like to learn more about Windows Server 2008 R2, please check out my classroom. And that would be at http colon slash slash classroom dot jackstechcorner.com and you can sign up for the Windows Server 2008 R2 class or just go to jackstechcorner.com and click on online learning and you'll find the classes in there you click on it you go right in the same way you can register for that class if you're interested in learning I also created a Windows Server 
2012 class, you can go in there and take that. Or if you're into virtualization, there's VMware ESXi 5.0 server in there. And it'll tell you from start to finish, from installation to ending. Once you complete my courses, you do earn a certificate of completion. And I mail that to you and you'll have that for your resume to help get that job that you're seeking or maybe that promotion that you're looking for. Hey folks, thank you very much for watching this episode of Windows Server 2008 R2 Multiple Websites. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and I'll see you back here next time. Thanks for watching and bye for now.